Hello everybody and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 13 Week 5. In the last game, Baladek changed everything and still didn't get a win. This game, let's see if he can change everything -er. Yeah, probably just throwing the same thing. No axe. Radiant team back. No Pugna, it's the exact same bands. Will it make a big axe player? I don't think so. I don't know if you necessarily need to make him like an every game ban for Baladek. Ten seconds. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I think he, he's seconds, more like uh, he plays a lot more like the utility threes than he does anything else. Yeah. Team back. No PL. Interesting set of bans. Radiant team pick. They do not want to run into that CK again. Fair, yeah. Very hard to argue against that. Dire team pick. Witch doctor. Ah, Spaz Witch Doctor. Not for mention. First, first pick Witch Doctor. Who's gonna have some fun this game? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Mars! Alright, Mars. Interesting. Going with the Mars lineup. Radiant gonna be running back the snap. I'm gonna be running a lion. At least here they're running a lion. Okay. I'll give you a pro tip if you are a captain in the LD2L, right? If you have a team that you know picks Snapfire and they first pick Mars, they don't pick up the Snapfire immediately after, remaining. you probably want to get rid of Snapfire. That's all I'm saying. Remaining. Radiant team back. Pick it back up the Phoenix. Huh? It's going to actually be, uh, I think, maybe a better game for the Phoenix here, actually. Really, really just, you know, Mars has absolutely nothing to do against Phoenix, nor does the Lion. But uh, the, 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 the desire, the need to ban Snapfire just got, like, a lot more, basically. Radiant team back. They better do that. Team no D, that's not Phoenix. Not Phoenix, that's not Snapfire. Pick Phoenix and then ban Phoenix, yes. Yeah. Remove Roxy from Shorting the game. Phoenix. Roxy's just not allowed to play, just doesn't have a hero. Has to be like a courier. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. The Snapfire ban is coming, right? I'm sweating over here. Oh my god, they didn't get rid of the snap. If they pick it up next round, you have nobody but they yourself to blame. How could they not? It's actually madness not to I pick mean, snap here. like... I don't know. I feel like we saw last game that snap doesn't really do anything in the Phoenix if you play around it. That's true, but... Like, uh... I don't know. I feel like... It's kind On the of other a, hand, Mars has so much ability. For that counter. Mars has so much ability to uh, stop that from happening. Like, if you set up the arena in the right spot, the Phoenix Sun is just a non factor. It's true, I just don't think they're necessarily gonna run it again. Guess We're not. In the punch, however. I don't I don't think I like the Pudge and Mars combo. Pretty good. They really are just running the exact same game again, huh? Yeah. Seems that way. So they got Wraith King. King. Yeah. It's gonna make uh it's gonna make getting anything done with a Mars very annoying. Nothing stops a uh an arena from being that good quite like Wraith King dying in the middle of it for the first life. Radiant team back. Phantom Assassin. 
PA. Pretty Earth good against PA. the Tide Hunter. I think in general in this Dying game, I would say the only thing that messes her up is Phoenix. I'd say the Maledict also is pretty bad for her. It's bad, but you shouldn't be taking enough damage for it to matter as PA. Well, you definitely you should. Are, you, like you, should you should be if there's a Phoenix in the lineup, is all I'm saying. They actually have a really good team to follow up on Melodix because you've got Phoenix who's going to be able to burn you up to follow that up. You got the Wraith Fire Blast who's able to burn you up to follow that up. You got the Tide Hunter Spit and you know how, you know, if we're going to do the Ags and uh, and Shard again, then he's going to have like a ranged spit, right? Radiant so it's definitely not going to be a game where PA is just going to get away easily from a Melodic. That's going to really cripple her ability to fight before the BKB comes up. Unless there's some really good arena jumps. Remaining. No AA, by the way. Five right. seconds yeah. remaining. A fairly annoying for PA. So. Hello? Hi. Dire team back. No shadow fin. Not ever. Yeah, that would be a pretty nasty combo, wouldn't it? Radiant team pick. No windrunner again. Howler been doing a lot of windrunner practice or something? Like I, maybe. Don't really think I like windrunner into PA anyway. Yeah, that's not the greatest. Five seconds remaining. I don't know if that was really worthy of a ban there. Hopefully they just uh, get Heller to random again. That would be funny. Most would definitely be funny. Uh, two mids here. Make him random every game until he, uh, until he cracks. Most definitely two mids unless uh, Edie and H has lost their mind in sending Pudge mid. Hey, that was great, like, seven years ago. It's true. Yeah, that's another thing that PA doesn't like to say. It's, uh, right, it's, it's annoying for PA if it's positioning base. Right. It and is going to be. It's not difficult to move a fight out of another toxin. Right. The problem is, is um, he does have a decent ability to keep you cooped up in it, and it really is going to basically like. If you get if your BKB runs out in a fight, you are totally dead. Like if you get Wraith Fire blasted and the and a uh, Nether Toxin comes down, you are a hundred percent gonna die. Lena, Lena, Lena huh? Okay. Your well, they picked a hero that can win the mid matchup with the Viper. Right. So there's that. I don't know how much Viper cares about winning this mid matchup, to be honest with you. I think this is definitely a game where, like, basically once he hits 6, he can say hell with it and just leave and not really worry about anything. The Tidehunter is really well, sure, something... You don't, you don't really want Lena having a free game. I don't know, I think it doesn't really matter that much. I think they have a pretty good, uh, pretty good anti-Lena lineup here. Uh, I don't know. The big thing Maybe, is, she's but... never gonna kill Tide. If Tide builds even kinda right, she's never gonna build Tide. She's never going to beat Tide, rather. Um, she's going to struggle a lot against the Viper in actual like mid-game fights, because it's another passive. You know, going to be good against the Sun, but they have so much stun on that lineup, it's really hard to say that that's going to be that reliable of an option. I think a lot of it is positioning base for a uh, for Baladek team. 
I think like I, I think there's like I think there's a there's a point where you have there. to say it's like the the positioning they would need is like too perfect to exist. Like they would need to have like psychic powers to have positioning so good to uh so as to ruin that. Like there's just going to be you know the real the reality of the situation is is like you don't have perfect control over where you're standing at any given time. You you still have your move speed. You still have your ability cooldowns. And I think that factor is going to screw them over quite frequently. I'll see. At least depending on how the spaz lineup plays this one. Pudge covering up his gross guts with a barrel. I like that. This is Prepare really GLHF easy one one. Easy one one, huh? This is really a. Uh... It's gonna be a lot of uh, focus on the pause three of this game. I think the way the pause threes play this game out is going to really completely change everything here. If Baladek drops the ball on the arenas, Lena, PA immediately become irrelevant. Just can't do anything anymore. If, uh, I almost doxed him on stream. If Crystal Miku drops the ball on the Ravages, if he's, uh, ravaging a dead Lena, for example, in this game, then Wraith King is just going to get kited out to death. Viper is just not going to be able to, uh, stand up to the Assault Ray. It's going to be very three dependent. These, uh, big team fight ults on the three is going to be very centered around those going to be centered a lot around the hooks, like the hooks have to be really good this game. Going to be centered a lot on the Maledict, the Maledicts have to be good, the Coconuts have to be good. It's your three and under club. I think if they play at an equivalent level, I think uh, Dotfa wins. They play at, an, at like a mirror match level, I think uh, Dotfa is going to generally win that encounter. There's too many answers to PA on this lineup, and uh, there's too many things she has to do, and too many things she has to worry about in a fight. You know, you were talking about positioning. You know, when you're when you're talking about positioning in the fight, you have to be assuming your BKB is not up. Position around the coconut, position around the matter toxin, position around the ravage, position around the phoenix sun, and position uh, around uh, like your general not getting hit by wraith king type positioning. And be positioning yourself for, like, offensive movements, right? You have to be... When that BKB is not up, you have to be, like, a god to to win this as PA. I just don't know how much Lena is going to do unless she goes, like, insanely out of control here. Like, they definitely just picked the Lena just to win mid. Yeah. I get it. Depending on how U.S. Danny plays it, certainly a possibility that they uh, that they win this mid. But the question of how much that buys them really, really is a lot harder to answer. You can also already see kind of the the opening stages of Viper saying hell with this and just going to be mostly farming with his is another toxin. Tell you this, I think the uh, the blank ags nonsense build from the last game is definitely not going to be the play this time. You can usually Trees assume. Come out again, I'm sure. Yeah, you can usually assume as a as a uh, as a pause three. Broadly speaking, you can usually assume that Lena is going to be going the. Uh, well, actually, no. You don't need to assume anymore because you can hedge your bets. This is a super big wraith pact game. Just another thing they have to worry about the fights, another thing they have to position around, and another thing they have to beat up when they're already having to focus on the sun, right? Drop a Wraith Pact active in this fight if you're Tidehunter, and Lena's off the map instantly. Just cannot do anything anymore. Perfect, so. just running, like, pretending to run Roxy out of this lane here. Yeah, it ain't working great for, uh, for Pudge so far. It's definitely making it a lot more annoying for Roxy than it has to be. So if that's the entire, That is I the worst coconut bounces in history. That's so sad. Yeah. Unfortunate. 
Those Kogan are getting this to go better, it's probably a kill, okay. Katie gets hit by a hook. Oh, that spear missed though, unfortunate. If you want some insider knowledge, I know Katie is not... Hey, there is one thing that is an X factor here. Katie is not good, just to be blunt, at playing against the Pudge. She is not great at dodging the hook. She is not great at trying to figure out where he's at without side being directly on him. And can easily psych herself out when Pudge is involved. I don't know why I would know that information, but I do. So to that end, uh, having a lane against him, having the, the presence of Pudge on her mind all game is going to change things quite heavily. Deny. Okay, you got a skeleton bodyguard crew during fights. Yeah, during fights it's not going to be quite, it's not going to mean quite as much, but until that point. Once again, uh, lame phase so far favoring the Radiant. Though this time, who the Radiant is exactly is a bit different. Even the uh, the Lena versus Viper mid so far is pretty much just a stalemate, which is, you know, for for Viper in this situation, not, not the worst outcome, certainly. I think people overstate how much of a bad matchup that is for Viper. I think there are definitely ways to play around it. I mean, I didn't say it was a bad match, I just said Lena could win it. A lot of LD2L people are like, uh, Viper, Lena, unplayable for Viper, but I've just never been quite inclined to agree with that one. Alright. First blood coming out on the, uh, Lion here. Blood in the water means it's time to feed. It's not time to feed. It's time to play Five. good. Got so first blood. For the record, if your name is Tidehunter and you see uh, you see somebody being maledicted like that, what you do is you spit on them. It's your PS saver today. Y'all are very low HP here. No one, three, four, to... build on the Wraith King is typical. Y'all are definitely going to have to uh, restock. He's actually going to take the walk back to spawn. Luckily for him, Lena's actually cycling in a lane right now, so he's not missing that much in doing so. Grabbing ball charges. Yep. Probably going to show up just after Lena reappears in lane. Nobody's down there. Which doctor be missing? It's completely untrue, but. Not a 12 year old can definitely make that claim. Lena. Pretty far forward here. Took a over half her health and damage there. She has actually won the uh, fight to six. Well, it was a stalemate earlier. She is starting to pull ahead, but it's not like quite enough to be like a really dominant win. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. <laughs> Got those phase boots on the uh, Wraith King. Yep, classic. The interesting, uh, the interesting thing is, is that while lane phase started well for the Radiant, the longer lane phase goes, the more it tilts into favor of the Dire. That's a good edge. I shouldn't have executed the blacksmith. This ain't good. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's super big. But... Just not quite nope. able to kill the Wraith King out of it. Never leave yeah. lane as 5, dude, what can I say? Never leave lane as 5, yes. Second they figured out Phoenix was just taking a uh, road trip there, they just went right in on him. And when they figured out Phoenix was gone again... Oh, from Ooh. friend of the show, Gorg C. They are so bloodthirsty. Phoenix desperately needs to get back here as soon as possible. Let's show him back up. Warcarp's gonna take some some damage stole here. Yeah, it's gonna. Mid is starting Warcarp's to gonna poke each other. Mid is starting to run away quite in favor of Lena here. Viper is definitely gonna need to just 
leave and start doing something more interesting very soon, or else this is just going to be like a a mild but flat loss for him. Like this is absolutely the time to just go, you know, go up top and just go splat PA or something. Nothing else. He is uh, keeping Lena just forced to stay around here, just constantly pushing, putting the pressure on the tower here. Maldic gets Up. a kill. Yep. Though. Okay, Blue Jay. Kill comes out in response. Ah, the creeps break. Oh my god, this is bad actually for. This is super bad for, uh, for Blue Jay. It's okay. They have the blank, but they couldn't. They didn't want to chase that. I think if they chase that, they get a kill. Yeah, I know. It's like, I think if they chase that, it's not far enough. I think if they chase that, they just get a kill. They didn't seem to realize. Maybe she was blurred out. Just didn't realize what way she was going. And they just kind of walked out of the way, beat it up, and just left it at that. She was still slow very heavily from the Viper ult. Meaning top. Okay, Roxy, what happens? I would say that favors that sequence of events definitely favors PA. It is worth a lot more for that one to get a kill than their three two. Yeah. And Witch Doctor definitely a target. Didn't you want to even die for it. So. I'm gonna try and go all in on the Titan here. It is a bit hard to see that do much. I cannot agree with this decision. Okay, uh, never mind. I can agree with it now. <laughs> Oh, that's a good dodge of the uh, impale there by Phoenix. Oh boy. Yeah, again, they just don't have the, uh. They don't have the CC for PA, it seems. Well, not in this lane, anyway. The organization on some of these, uh, kill attempts. Uh, color is here. Yeah. Organization on some of these kill attempts isn't going really in their favor. Like, there's just a lot of these kills where the Maledict comes out really late or just doesn't happen at all. Probably gonna kill studs here. Yeah. Yep. Probably would have been better there to just turn around and throw Coconut. And Heller is also dead. Yeah. Spaz just right clicking away from that fight. Really did not do them any good, unfortunately. If he just. Considering he was just completely dead anyway. If he turns around, he throws a coconut into that mass, I think PA dies. So PA was just not in the best spot there, but... I was just trying desperately to get out, even when that was not really a feasible possibility. Wraith King actually leveling the reincarnated six. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Crystal Miku needs some goddamn mana, dude. <laughs> True. I'm super worried he's just gonna like blow his mana pool, then blink in and not have enough for Ravage. That would be funny. How they're back in mid, just not the place to be. I don't know why Katie's walking away from this. You know nobody's here, just, just be there, just take that wave. Take these goddamn waves. I tell you why Katie's not there. Katie's scared of Pudge because he's not directly on the sight line. That's what I was talking about earlier in action there. I'm just gonna let Baldek get some just uncontested farm for a while. It really didn't need to be. Al are too slow to get anything done here. Radiant structures are fortified. Let's see, pulling it on courier. Dragon Lance service him. Yeah. Ironically, something that was just just uh, seen by Haller said I was too slow, which is correct. Oh, it is Dragon Lance. I was a little worried that I was going to be a uh, hammer for Maelstrom. It was a super not a Maelstrom game for Viper. After uh, after Lance, maybe after Lance and Shard, if you want to be fancy. I don't know. I think this is a situation where you can put it off just They're a little bit. They're smoking out of these two at top. Yeah. Top tower is under attack. It's a super smart smoke, actually. Yeah, just gonna get these Elite two. Elite and land. Uh, Tiger no is not looking too much better. Yeah. 
more money into the pockets of PA. Right. There is a way PA does something in this game, is that she just gets such a huge farm advantage that she just becomes impossible to stop even if you have all the Oh, they can her. propel her right in the arena, but... Oh! I'm gonna, gonna die for his troubles. Maybe sir. Never mind. And pop seller, yeah. There's one thing that you definitely are starting to notice here. There's like a massive mobility deficit on the Radiance part. It's just, they're always getting... Like, somebody on the dire is always just walking away from them, no matter how much CC they have. Need some bongo boots ASAP. Arm up on the Wraith King. Look at the net worth charts here. Again, just pretty cleanly favoring Dire so far. Yeah, this PA looks scary, and we've seen... Wraith King games where he kind of just gets out carried by an enemy carry who got a really good start. Right. Nothing else, it's not like, uh, not like Wraith King is that far behind. Not even a full grand down, he is basically a grand down, but not a full grand down here. You know what the problem is, PA flush farms. Problem is with that, it's like I said earlier. Thoroughly. Team has so many TA or PA answers that as long as, well, there you go, PA just randomly die in there. As long as an answer to PA exists and is able to be relevant to some extent, then uh, it's just never going to be great news for her. Like, if Wraith King is able to stay on PA so with PA to any real degree, the matchup is going to favor his lineup, I think. Very brave, uh, very brave kill there for the, for the Viper there. A punch. Kind of just got walked, just walked up to him. But once again, they just are too slow to do anything about him. He's just able to speed walk away, they can't stop him. Where coconut is really annoying. Please turn your armlet off and don't just drain your entire HP bar. Where coconut is really annoying is just not a good stun for a situation like that. Okay. That guy's dead. Yep. Which doctor likely to follow. Going to furiously ping out for his team, but nothing yeah, will happen. And Wraith King can't do anything more about this because he's burned off his entire HP bar with armlet. Please don't do that. He's gonna get a lot of it back off the camp, but yeah, that's actually really bad. It's like probably a kill that Katie just missed because of that. Oh, no, she's here. Interesting TP. I'm just gonna walk right by it. Gonna stalk in the map. Ooh. Okay. Says, uh, fuels that one. Whiz right past his ear. Arena comes up. Phoenix drops ult. Oh, Crystal man. Meek is too late. He doesn't have ult himself. He doesn't have ult himself. Okay, he doesn't. Well, that's just objectively incorrect. You're not gonna save for the... okay. Oh, Wraith King's gonna just very casually go down. Should not yeah, have been anywhere yeah. close to here. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's a major coordination disaster for EDNH. They just did everything they shouldn't have done in that fight. Shouldn't have had Wraith King anywhere near that. They shouldn't have had the uh, Tide Hunter, like, ult when the Phoenix ult wasn't around yet. Or vice versa. Like, these two ults, they just need to go together. They have to go together. If these two ults come out at different times, you basically don't have, like, the Phoenix ult. You're basically down one. 
Literally everything went wrong there, and that is not great. I don't know why we're looking at current gold. But the, uh, whereas once there was a, you know, one K gold difference, now we're suddenly I'll looking at away, a huh? very massive gold, gold deficit. Why is Katie here? You are way too early to be fighting, especially with your ult down. This is so dangerous, dude. I'm worried sick about this. Especially the team walking away from her. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's very crazy. Fine, I think I see Mars on the wave, so I think without Mars, they don't really do anything. I think with the, the Pudge Hook and Dismember, they can just chain stun her long enough to get the kill. Sure, so hopefully she dies. A lot less scary than Mars. And no reason to risk it either. They get nothing having her up there. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower. Everybody TPs to the bot tower like a like a bot match. <laughs> Spaz gets the last hit with the last coconut bounce, very fortunately for him. Radiance middle tower is under I mean, incidentally, BKB is uh is up there. Yep. Has a nine second to use here. Which means she's not gonna die for a while. Radiance top tower is under They can attack. live past the next, oh, he's going the Ags route again, that's not good. If they can live past the next, like, ten minutes, then I don't know how much that net worth advantage on Lena is going to matter, but if this PA net worth advantage gets much worse, it's going to be very bad. Yeah. Like, they just, well, just to be blunt, they need to not mess up the team fight. basically. If they don't mess up the team fight, I think they're pretty much going to win it every time, but... They keep doing what they did in the last matchup. Running match a carp here yep. is gonna tank this happily. Yep, just completely dead. Better than your PA getting gone on or your Lena getting gone on, so yep. he's happy with it. She's not happy, but he's content with it. The warring war. Yeah, decisive victory for the Dyer here. Ongoing order war. <laughs> Hell yeah. This is a real action. Oh, well, they're just gonna push up bot lane here. Tome's going to be bought up. Oh my god, the Grobo. Okay, Proxy's gonna do that. Yeah, the eggs, uh, the egg shard build for four tide was probably the way to go last game. But this game, you really just need some tank. And it's like it's such a bu almost this binary issue because it's like if you get some tank, like if you pick up the the wraith pact, like Lena is never gonna be a threat to you. Yep. Well, somebody just randomly died. Phoenix just randomly got jumped up. Lena is just never gonna be a threat to you. PA is gonna be pretty heavily uh, sore. But oh, oh, they're, going, they're going pretty far here. And we're getting TP responses. Oh so man, they're all good. Very unlucky. Very unlucky coconut bounces there. Oh, Howler just gets eliminated. Why is yeah. Katie here? They're Randy, I, I got an honest question for you, okay? Why in God's name is Wraith King there? That might be it. It's very early to say that, but that might be it. I think Wraith King has just shown and spilled way too many times this early. Just cannot do that. Absolutely needs to just go somewhere and just farm and ignore fights and just pretend they don't exist. But he hasn't been doing that. And he's just let the enemy line up 
get massive Radiance advantages on him. Bottom tower is under attack. Good news for Radiant the problem, the problem is the PA is fighting and fighting very successfully and you can't outform a PA as a Wraith King, like it's impossible. Well, the problem is, you need to stay at least on parity. Like, the PA is fighting, and, you know, that's not good, but I tell you what's even worse is, PA is fighting and killing you every team fight, you know? Yeah, Killing well, you every team, team fight while you're getting you no farm. Way, because... No, you just, I think you can win if you just don't take don't the fight. Think so. I, I think you just. I don't PA. think you need to have farm. I think there's enough answers to TA if the game goes late. And Well, the well, answers aren't answering right now, it seems. Yeah. Well, the answers aren't answering her, because they're, uh... How, how do I say playing it wrong in the nice way? Just feels like every fight, there's at least some misplay to some degree on, uh, on Dotfa. Once again, Wraith King coming out just should not be here. But it's very strange, it felt like last game, like, the way the ults were coming out for Dotfa was really well coordinated. Felt like, you know, every time the Phoenix Egg came down, it survived. Every time the Ravage came out, unless it was on a dead person, it got a kill. But this time, it's just night and day. This time, it's like, you know, the fight starts with, like, the, the, the Ravage, and then, like, a Phoenix ult a few minutes later that just dies instantly. The Viper Break Gunk just comes out on Lena. It's being very, very predatory towards Lena specifically. Viper Break Gun comes out on Lena and she just walks out of it in one second. Nobody stuns in it. Which shocks just not really having, it feels like, any tangible impact on these fights, even though he's such a crucial part piece of this puzzle. I don't know. Feels like there's a, like a communication breakdown between game one and two, like somebody left the Discord or something, you know what I'm saying? If the communication is good, I think they, like I said, if the pieces come together, I think they win every fight, and if they don't, they're just going to lose every fight. I think it's very much like the uh, the WSC game from last week, which, you know, we, 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 we talked about, where, you know, on paper, I think this is, like, a better team lineup. On paper, I think this is, like, a, like a lot of good matchups. But in practice, like, the execution factor has just not come together. And some of the builds are also kind of whack, as the kids say. This is very unfortunate. I mean, hey, Katie's my friend, right? I want Katie's team to do well, but this ain't how you do it. If you can't bring together a lineup like this in the future, pick simpler lineups, I think it's basically just the long and short of it. Wonder how much having the stand in. Oh, well, I would say usually wonder how much having the stand in changes things, but. Like Roxy's super good. Yeah. Well, Roxy's super good, but isn't part of the team dynamic, right? So when you're talking about communication and execution, it's like the big issue. Where was the blink? When you're talking about communication and execution, it's a big issue. It's very necessary. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Who said I jolly? Who said Pudge ain't jolly? Just out of curiosity. An old talisman's just rolled over on Lena. Yep. I have a attack. lot of mana reason for all that now. You're gonna use it to... ...hold down a set of wrecks. They are not even making an attempt to defend this. Yeah, I mean, they're all here, but they're not doing anything. It's kind of wasting time. Wait, if you're not gonna... Defend at least farm something, push another wave. I don't know. Like, and, if what's happening here? and if you're not gonna defend and you're not gonna farm, just call the I think GG. they gave up. Pretty yeah. sure they gave up. Yeah. Like, you're just trolling us by not calling GG when you're in a situation like that. If you're not gonna defend. Dyer's top tower is under attack. At least the skeletons are beating up the T1 top. Top oh. Oh, that's a really good Ravage. Everything actually coming out really well this ravage. time. Very night and day type team fight going on. We're gonna lose the uh, the Titaner for it. Oh. 
I mean, they did all that just to get Aegis. It's kind of the unfortunate part. That has no grip on the Wraith King. Like, they got Ray an coconut. Aegis and a Punch for that. And that was everything. Sure. So, if they get caught out here, then they really don't have much. On the other hand, they didn't really lose particularly much to do that. They just lost the tide. So when that when that sort and of happens, all their ults, is what I'm saying. They lose all their ults, but and they're gonna lose the tide again. It yeah. seems. Oh, or they might not lose like, their king. Not like Radiance. Any condition to fight? Blue Jay gonna go down. Not Radiant Dire. Oh, okay. That's the thing with ults, it doesn't matter if they all go down if they are, uh, <laughs> if the use is still there. When the ults all went down, there was still no ability to push in there. And when they weren't able to push in there and still try, they lost Mars and PA for it. PA melted particularly easy there for a second life. So to that end, that shows you what happens when, uh, when things come together there. You know, they just take... T they take a major VIP in the uh, PA. They actually knock down Mars without him being able to arena as well. They knock two over. They lose nothing for it, but they have to do that. Like, they have to... <laughs> you know, things have to come together well for them. If they just kind of casually drop stuff like they've been doing for a lot of this game, there's just no hope. Oh, poor Tide. And, uh... That's a die, bud. That's a dieback. Oh, and if Tide is going to wander around a jungle with no vision when he knows there's a uh, Lena with Invis, then it's also not going to help things. At the very least, he's going to be down, uh, like, half of his downtime, his Ravage is going to be on cooldown, and right now that's all he is. He has that shard, but that shard doesn't mean anything. He just hasn't built right to make the Ag's shard mean anything here. I think a build like that is only going to work all that great anyway when you're ahead. So it's definitely not a bad idea to shift gears if you're if you're thinking about it and you're it's like the game is down, right? It's a very interesting scenario because this is like the typical Baladek game scenario, but it's actually going like well for them. Yeah. The uh the Radiant has a better draft. The Baladek is outplaying them. The Baladek team is outplaying them. But uh, this time it's to such a degree that even with the superior draft, Radiant's still just gonna get canned here, it feels like. I mean, it's not over. If they keep striking, like, correctly, if things keep coming out right, um... There's definitely still a path to victory, even the racks down, even though they did see the racks, and that's very unfortunate, but even if this this lane is down, there is like a path to victory here still. But they have to be coordinated, they have to be communicating, and if they aren't, there isn't one. Satanic yep. coming out of Lena. Very slow siege going down here. You know, I'm starting to feel like we just never see Witch Doctor win an LD2L. Like, for how often he's I mean, there was that one years. wizard game where he got like 30 kills or whatever. Yeah. It's like it. Feels like S12 and 13, whenever we see Witch Doctor, just doesn't have much impact and ends up on the little L team. Got a smoke gank going on here. It's a bit interesting. Titan are immediately going to be dropping it. And they're getting pinned to a building. No, never mind. Ball like desperate to not get jumped on there. 53 seconds to Roche. Um, there you go. Um, U.S. Danny just deletes everybody. Not everybody necessarily, but I can't say I necessarily agree with the uh, the, the play there. That actually, funnily enough, that has uh, shades of the week one U.S. Danny game where he was the Shadow Fiend. He just kind of 
walked up top and died for no good reason. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's not how I feel for sure. It's true. Uh okay. Oh, and these once again, early gonna, missed hooks. I'm gonna walk away from the racks here. It really shows the importance of self perseverance, does it not? Like, oh no, four egg. Only Viper with three sets closer. Really shows you the importance of self perseverance in a game like this. Like, if they don't go out, I think there's another successful defense here. Like, if Viper, Phoenix, and Tidehunter just stay a little bit more paid. Well, Tidehunter really. It wasn't really tied on his fault per se. He went down. It's just the, basically a, ineffective, like Viper and Phoenix going up top. Viper and Phoenix then just kind of go up top. I don't think they die there. They don't die there. I think they have another successful defense. If they have another successful defense, it's just a closer road to a victory condition. But there you go. Right. Okay. Well, this analysis is going to be very simple. Um, please talk to your team. Please coordinate. I mean, you know, talking to t talking to the team is just very generic, I guess you can say, but, like, there's not really... And I can be mean to them, because Katie's my friend, I can flame her all I want. There's not really a reason that Lena went 7-0-9 this game. Like, absolutely should not have been able to do that, basically. Nothing has lined up for her where that's logically the case. But every part of the coordination for Dufa went down... The literal coordination in team fights, it wasn't good. The way people were building wasn't good. The target prioritization, it wasn't good. And it just seemed like, um, in particular, the supports would often just kind of get left behind here. The The strategy wasn't good. They, uh, like, they were just pulling out Wraith King to fight early, and it's like, no real value doing that. Like, Wraith King fight, trying to fight early cannot do anything, right? Like... One of the absolute worst pause ones for early fighting, I would say, unless you are miles and miles and miles ahead, which obviously Wraith King, not in this game. And it's, uh, it's understandable why this is the case. I mean, like I said, 20 minutes before this game, their pause 3 quit. They got a new pause 3, they got a new uh, pause 5 as a stand-in. Um, so it's no surprise that the coordination factor got a real shot here. But moving forward, definitely, definitely, definitely need some shot calling going on in this team because I it felt like there was a lot of good shot calling in game one, and it feels like there was no shot calling in game two, and that's the most confusing part to me. Like this problem did not exist in game one. I think in game one it went really well. Maybe the issue is is like they don't know what to do if Katie can't fight early. Like, Katie needs to be looking at, like, really early game pause ones, and they want to be, like, a 20 minutes to win it cult of the offensive type team? I don't know. But you cannot let a match like that happen to you again, because this was a win that I think Dotfish should have got that they didn't. The uh, the EDNH lineup absolutely walked all over them. And there was, yeah. there was uh, t some degrees to which that was... You know, ED and H having the advantage. I thought the Mars Arenas were generally good. It seemed like pretty much everyone really messed up the team fight. I thought the hooks were really good. There were multiple hooks and kills on the uh, on just VIPs in this game. They were really disruptive to this fight. Um, I think the the complete crazy rush of BKB on both Blue Jay and Danny saved them a lot of headache. Now, if Viper is looking for that he does actually have a bit of a say in that one thing about pa bkb in this game is like you're still actually kind of in danger because your your hp your tankiness is so low because the viper ult is still hitting you through bkb usually that doesn't mean much because viper is not really able to follow up on that but actually in a situation like this right against heroes like pa and lena actually for that matter that viper strike through bkb is actually still doing quite a lot right like it's still going to be doing a lot of their a lot of damage to a very squishy target. So you're actually going to be able to to overcome the BKBs to a degree. But you need some physical damage to follow up on that. They really didn't have any. 
I guess that was probably, if there was anything, the the, the most major downside to this lineup is, once again, they were really, really deficit on uh, fizz damage, actually. I think a little worse than the last game, because uh, Ty wasn't able to get the Ags in any sort of good time, and, you know, the, uh, they they did have the, the, the Witch Doctor ult. It just didn't feel like, w without the CK, it just felt like they were missing so much of that fizz damage in these fights. Um, right. Because Wraith King takes longer to come online. So than much CK longer. Does, yeah. So much longer. And yeah. Um, like, I, I hope people don't interpret it as a flame when I say Dotfa probably should have won this game. Not a big fan of the EDNH draft, but the way the play actually came out, uh, it was just sufficient enough. Um, you know, they played well enough, and unfortunately Dotfa played poorly enough this time. And again, if you if you think it's flame, go and listen to game one because, like I said, a it, everything is night and day in game one. And I just I don't know what what do you think? You got you theorize something for me here because you're a doctor, right? I don't I I don't know just communication issues. I yeah. guess maybe we, like uh yeah the 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 symptoms are it, it, really it, good it morale, communication. It definitely morale busted really early in this game too. Potentially. The defense where they just weren't doing anything, just like standing yeah. in fountain or whatever. They didn't GG, so they weren't that busted, it seems. Like, most of, uh... I think most of the mids, or, like, paused ones in this league, you would see, like, TP out to a free lane during a Rex push if they don't want to defend it. As, whereas, in this game, you saw five people in the base, not but not doing anything, you're just wasting right. time. Right. But really, though, what... You know, the symptoms are really good coordination game one, really bad coordination game two. What's the disease? I don't know. I don't know no what diagnosis. happened. I don't know. Well, either way, uh, that's it for tonight. If you or somebody you know wants to get flamed by us on uh, national TV, just like Dotfa did this game, go to ld2l.gg to sign up today. There are so many people coming in and out of this league at this point, you might actually be able to get a slot here, and if not, you're certainly going to be able to stand in. We got stand-ins coming in all the time. Um, and, uh, yeah. What's our sponsor today, Randy? What is our sponsor today? That's a good question. Uh, our sponsor is uh, Shoney's again. Sorry. Today's sponsor is Shoney's. If you want to get some ham cubes or uh, some like turnip greens or some other stuff you don't want to eat, that's Shoney's, baby. Shoney's has your name on it. Uh, as long as you're in, like, the Deep South. If you are somewhere where, um... If you are somewhere currently where you are not getting eaten by mosquitoes, you, there's probably not a Shoney's in sight. But, uh... Yeah, if you live in, like, Bangladesh or something, probably not. Yeah, probably not. But, uh, hey, if you're if you uh, in a very narrow portion of land, um... If your ancestors own people, there's a good chance... It's a Shoney's near you, and you can go yeah, and try it go. if you have nothing better to do for your day. We'll see you next time. That's going to be MK Ulti versus BAR. That's a very interesting matchup. That's uh, two, two of some of the top contender games this season, so don't want to miss that if you're watching through these.